Good evening. Thank you for joining me again on our car Facebook page. Hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe. The shortest verse in the Bible is John 11, 35. There are only two words in this particular verse, so it's a very easy verse to memorize. It simply says, Jesus wept. Brenda Doherty was on BBC Newsline last night and she was in tears because her mum, Ruth Burke, was the fourth person in Northern Ireland to die from the coronavirus. And understandably, Brenda was devastated at the loss of her mum. She was unable to kiss her mum goodbye, unable to see her in her coffin. And our world tonight is a literal sea of tears and it has the potential to become a tsunami of tears. John eleven thirty five 35 tells us that Jesus shed tears. Jesus wept. The context for this particular story was that Jesus was in Jerusalem with his disciples and word reached him that his great friend Lazarus was unwell. Martha and Mary sent a message to Jesus. Jesus loved this family. He spent many hours in their home in Bethany and he was comfortable in their company. But the strange thing was that Jesus didn't leave immediately for Bethany. He delayed his departure for two days. And on his way two days later to Bethany, he'd informed his disciples on the journey that Lazarus had died. How did he know this? He knew this because he's God. When he arrived in Bethany, we're told that Martha ran out to meet him. And as usual, Martha was very candid and very blunt. She shoots from the hip and she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus reassured her by telling her that he was the resurrection and the life. Mary ran out to meet him. She fell at his feet. She said exactly the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And John eleven thirty three tells us, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Jesus was troubled by the terrible effects of sin, the ravages the devil had made of this world. He looked at this scene. His dear friends, Martha and Mary, are broken hearted over the loss of their brother. And his friends and his neighbours are, are weeping uncontrollably. And this scene of despair and mourning caused the Lord Jesus Christ to be deeply moved and greatly troubled. And as he came to the tomb of Lazarus, John eleven thirty five tells us succinctly, concisely and briefly, Jesus wept. What a stunning verse this is. The shortest verse in our Bible, but certainly one of the most profound verses in our Bible. Jesus wept. The Creator cries, the Saviour sobs. The one who was God in the flesh wept as he confronted the devastation caused by the last enemy death. It's tyranny, it's misery. It's cruelty. The eternal Son of God stood at the grave of Lazarus and he wept. Real tears ran down his cheeks. And he watched Martha and Mary distraught. And he cried. Now these weren't professional tears. They weren't sentimental tears. They were heartfelt, genuine, compassionate tears. Two things they tell us tonight. The tears of Jesus. Firstly, Jesus cares. That was his primary motivation for going to Bethany. The message was, he whom you love is ill. He cared deeply for Martha and Mary. They were his friends and they were now grieving over the loss of their brother and they were understandably devastated. The chill of death had descended upon their home and the Lord Jesus Christ felt their pain and grief because he cared for them. He loved that family. They were his people. They were his followers. And he entered into their grief. He empathised with them. No one ever loved people like the Lord Jesus. His love and loyalty were perfect. He cared passionately for his friends. This is why he delayed his visit to Bethany. That he could enter into their grief. And at times he may let us go through the ultimate extremity. And then he comes. And he enters right into our sorrow and into our tears. He could have prevented this death with just a word. But he identified with the family. He identified with the community. And his whole body began to shake and he wept real tears. This is our saviour. 
This is the perspective he wants us to have of him. He's not harsh or aloof or demanding. He's not indifferent or detached or remote from our pain. I want to remind you tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ cares for you. Yes, he's the God-man. His power is immeasurable. His holiness is limitless. But let this truth sink right into your heart tonight. Jesus Christ cares for you. He's interested in every intimate area of your life. Every seemingly insignificant detail in your life. He cares when you're lonely, when you're depressed, when you're anxious, when you're discouraged, when you're tempted. And he cares when you cry. The incarnation shows us that he cares. The cross shows us that he cares. He sees the tears that no one else sees. The tears you shed last night. The tears you shed this morning. And Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast all our cares upon him, Jesus, for he cares for us. And Jesus cares for this world. He made this world in all its beauty, in all its intricacy, in all its complexity. And he cares for this world tonight, coping with this pandemic. This world has been cursed by sin. And death stalks our world tonight because of man's rebellion. The tears of Jesus tell us that he cares, but the tears of Jesus also tell us that he understands. Jesus stood face to face with death and he wept. He was in every way like us apart from one thing. He was sinless, he was perfect. He experienced the full gamut of human emotions. He was tired, he was lonely, he was frustrated, he was sad, he was angry and happy at times. And he was touched by grief himself. Friends and family would have died when he was a young boy and a young man. Apparently his earthly father Joseph had died. So he understands the heartache, the devastation, the separation that death brings in a family. He is known as the man of sorrows. He supported Martha and Mary, even knowing that the greatest of all his miracles was just about to take place. He wept because he understands. He's full of compassion. He understood exactly what this family and this community were going through. He entered into their sorrow. He felt their pain. And remember tonight, he feels your pain and he understands your situation. Because he, the Lord Jesus, became man he can identify with our trials and temptations. He understands our heartaches and our pain and our, the difficulties we face in life. He understands when we grieve over the loss of a loved one. He understands when our heart is breaking. He's been there. And he understands your situation tonight. Even if you reach the stage where things for you personally are spiraling out of control. Physically. Emotionally. Spiritually relationally and if you're honest as you watch the news like the rest of us you're confused what's going on you're anxious you're worried Jesus Christ understands he's in complete control Martha and Mary knew exactly what to do whenever their world fell apart they sent for the teacher the Lord Jesus they poured out their hearts to him they knew Jesus cared they knew Jesus understood and the last book of the Bible in Revelation 21 verse 4, we are reminded that this same Jesus will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. If you're a Christian tonight and you're watching this, this is your assurance. This is your hope. One day Jesus will wipe away every tear. But listen as we close. If you're not a Christian, if you're still rejecting Jesus at present, at the minute, you do not have the same hope. You do not have the same assurance. Because the destiny of all who continue to reject the person and work of the Lord Jesus will be the place that no one wants to talk about. A place called hell. Where there will be actually wall to wall weeping and gnashing of teeth for all eternity for billions of years 
Only those who put their trust in Jesus are guaranteed forgiveness and are promised heaven. We are still in the day of grace tonight. You can be saved tonight. If you realise how serious your sin is, if you repent of that sin and you believe that whenever Jesus was on the cross, he was dying in your place, paying your debt, securing your forgiveness. Jesus Christ is a welcoming saviour. He's a wonderful saviour. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you call out to him tonight, he will save you. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And because of his wonderful, incomparable love for us, we can be assured tonight that Jesus cares and that Jesus understands. Let me pray for you all just now. Thank you, Father, for the Bible. Thank you for this, the shortest verse in the entire Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, telling us that Jesus wept. Thank you that we have seen tonight that Jesus cares and that Jesus understands. We thank you for the gift to this world of your Son, that he lived a perfect life, a blameless life, a spotless life. We thank you that he died on the first Good Friday. We thank you that he rose again the third day. We thank you that he ascended to heaven and we thank you that he's at your right hand now waiting for the signal to return to this world. We pray for your people that they'd be encouraged tonight from your word, that they'd be comforted and assured by the truth of the Bible. And for anyone watching this video tonight, still not a Christian, may they realise the gravity of their sin. May they realise tonight the seriousness of their sin and may they put their trust in Jesus right now May they be guaranteed heaven and may their forgiveness be secure tonight. We give you thanks for your son. In his worthy name we pray. Amen. Good night. God bless you and keep safe.